I was like, oh, God, that sucks, and this sucks, and I would have done this different, and, oh, so I couldn't watch it, so I had to leave, but. <sighs> but it was still awesome. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. Thank you. Erin's actually going to be in my next movie, so I'm excited. The girl who played Annabelle. Yeah. We worked for, um, Aaron and I worked for like four years together on it, and then Diane, the teacher, came on three days before we started shooting which was so challenging for her because she was like trying to learn lines and coming into such a, a hard character. So it was, uh, yeah. Do y'all want to ask me anything about it? I mean, I'm here and there are a lot of people that would like to ask some crazy questions. So if anybody wants to know anything, I'll tell you. How much of you is in any one of those characters? No one's ever asked me that. <laughs> Do I've I have been to, to over a hundred screenings and no one ever asked me that. Um, I think I used to be a lot like Annabelle, and then now I'm more like Simone. And uh, yeah. Were you ever like Cat? No, I was never mean. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> no, but I knew girls like her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I knew oh, girls like her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I went to, um, I didn't go to Catholic boarding school, but I went to public school and I just always liked the girls. I thought they were cute in their skirts and I wanted to go to the private school, so. No, you didn't. <laughs> if I had teachers that looked like Simone, I would. Oh, yeah. oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Where was it? Where were the beach scenes filmed? That was in Malibu. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. And where's the school? Where's the... the school's in Pasadena. We shot the whole thing in California. Well, I gathered that. I just, yeah. I was trying to place, mm -hmm. figure out where it was. Yeah, we shot it in like, gosh, like two and a half weeks. It was just crazy. Wow. Crazy. Wow. Two and a half. Yeah, so it's 14, 15, so yeah, fast, you know, I mean, usually you shoot, like in big movies, you shoot like maybe a page or two a day, we were shooting like seven, eight pages, like wow. that, the church scene, and that's why it's hard to watch, because I'm like, oh god, if I would have had more time, but like the church scene with the priest and uh, Diane, they literally said you have 20 minutes to shoot this entire scene. Wow. That Why scene, push? that's that would be a scene that you would spend the entire day shooting. Is so it's the budget? Budget. Yeah, because you don't. Yeah, I mean, because you have to pay everybody, feed everybody, and then all the equipment. I mean, that church alone. I wanted to have that church, and that church alone was like three grand for the day. Wow. So yeah, it was just budget <clears throat> reasons. Because I we made that for like. I don't know, like four hundred thousand dollars. So we didn't have a lot of money. So. How long did it take you to shoot um, Waking Madison? Waking Madison, we shot that for like, uh, three and a half weeks. Yeah, which comes out July twelfth. I'm excited. Wow. Elizabeth Shue and some other really amazing actors. So it'll be fun. No, um, is the DVD available? Which one? Is, um. This loving animal. Oh yeah, yeah. It's on Netflix or oh, okay. Blockbuster. Yeah. I think yeah. I bought it through the mail. Yeah. yeah. Or the distributor Wolf has it. Amazon. Yeah. For sure. And it's on instant stream on Netflix. So. We're fun too. Good. Are we going to go? Oh. What are you drinking? Root beer. What? Root beer. <laughs> it's natural. Beer. I know. Are you asking me a question or are you commenting on my root beer? No, I asked you what you were drinking. Oh, root beer. <laughs> okay, oh, okay. That's what I thought. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Done? Okay. Let's Thank see. you. How many years sure. did it take you to write that? Seven. It's Seven. amazing that you could shoot it that quickly. Uh, it was mm -hmm. crazy. And then we had less, we didn't have a lot of time to edit it either. Um, I had the, I had the edit, I had the editing equipment in my apartment in Silver Lake. So I would literally like just wake up and like go to the machine and edit and then go back to sleep because we only had like six weeks to put it all together. So it was just like really fast, you know.
Well, then of course you, you can be critical, but I know it's please, just I know what you did. I know. Do you want to talk any more about the the current project? Have you are you fully funded? Are you? Well, we're. Um, I'm kind of like getting funded as I go along. You know, like doing fundraisers here and there. Um, I think we're going to have to start another Kickstarter campaign in probably three weeks. Um, but yeah, I, I forgot to like budget in things like laundry. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, no, <laughs> no but yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I did it, you know, it's just, it's something that it went so fast. Like I came up with the idea and then the next day we started Kickstarter and I was like, Okay, what's the minimum you can do it for? I'm like, uh, $50,000, you know? And now I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> this is like, I'm flying in um, an, another editor. We, we, we basically have so much good footage. I don't know how I'm ever going to cut it down to 100 minutes because everybody's story. I thought there'll be 50 people I'm seeing. Maybe I'll get like 10 good stories and then the documentary will be the 10 people i've already seen seven people and all seven are like mind-blowing so i don't know what i'm gonna do like but i'm trying not to think about that i'm just like okay one day at a time just be present shoot it give all the footage to the editors let them start piecing it together so and then it goes to dvd you can do a bonus dvd yeah i was thinking like well because the all i want to do is like any profit that the movie makes, I want to give it all to the Trevor Project. And, like, I just, because people donated to make it happen, and so I want to give back. So I'm like, how can I make, because the more money that it makes, the more, like, I can help, you know? And so if it's a documentary, then it can get a lot more attention. But if it's, like, an HBO series, then I lose control. So I have to, like be really careful because the whole reason I wanted to do this was just like I just don't want to work for a network. I just want to do it the way I want to do it and not have to answer to anybody. So I think I'll just make the documentary, screen it at Sundance, and then I'll have all that footage and see what happens from there. You know. What's the Trevor Project? The Trevor Project is, um, I've been working with them for nine years. They, um, they help uh, lesbian and gay teens that are suicidal. It's like a hotline and yeah. <clears throat> And because I was suicidal, and that's the reason I went to do face to face, I just thought, well, let me help other people that were in my spot. So, yeah. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm excited about it. Y'all have to get little bracelets and wear them, and postcards and stuff, and dog tags. I have them all outside. We're starting a whole counterculture. Yeah, it's for yeah, it's it's united. It's like this whole like subworld. I, I seem to be like because I feel kind of crazy and like an outsider, but face to face, like everybody that's connected feels like an outsider, and so it makes us feel like we're not an outsider because we're crazy and it's our world to be crazy in. So it's cool. I like it. I work with the, um, Manchester Outright. It's gay and lesbian youth group. And it's amazing to see these young people come in. They don't know each other. And by the end of that hour and a half, two hours, they're exchanging phone numbers and, you know, they're bosom buddies. And, and it's just great to see the support that they show for one another. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope that this, um, I think you just forget when you get sad, you forget that you're not alone. Like there are other, I think, I think what I've learned the most, <laughs> it's like that cross she was wearing. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I think, think several crosses right there. <laughs> I feel like what I've learned the most is that the that everybody, and this is what I kept saying about face to face, like everyone has a story. Everyone has an insecurity or an imperfection or something that haunts them, or you know, and and it's almost like when we start to open up about that, we see that other people are imperfect, like we are. And then that feel, it makes us feel like we're, you know, I don't know. It we're just not like, so imperfect after all. Yeah, and I, commonality. yeah, and I'm so, 
Like, I've only been doing it seven days, and I love that I'm crazy. Like, I'm so happy that I'm not normal. <laughs> and that all the people that I'm meeting have, you guys have no idea, like, the, uh, the second person that I met, she only has a couple of days to live. And she's on a ventilator, and, you know, I just got to sing music with her and be with her, and it was like, God, this is, like, what it's about. And um, she also got away with manslaughter and she's by she's like got this in very interesting past but she's um I don't know it's just these stories everybody's stories just so like invigorating and I don't know makes you feel like you're not so um looped in the head when you start talking to people and hear where they've come from and what they've had to deal with so it's cool I, I sense that there's this uh that you have this gift of walking over to something inflated and opening it up and letting the air out, what's trapped inside. Mm -hmm. And um, you talk, you talk really openly about um, your experience mm -hmm. with suicide. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see you um, open up that valve. Well, I will. I'll share something with you that obviously no one's going to know about until the movie comes out, but. Um, I actually filmed myself ODing. I shot Is that it. that little clip that yeah, you saw? Yeah, that's pieces of the clip. Um, I mean, I'm a documentarian, and I I was ready to go. And I, I filmed the whole thing. And um, I, I wanted... I, I, I didn't want anything at that time. I guess I wanted to... I guess if my mom saw it or whoever saw it, to understand why I was going and why I needed to leave. And I got to tell you, I don't I don't know the bigger picture, but it does feel like a part of me left because I said to God or the universe, I said I don't want my life. I'm I've never been happy. I'm 35. I've struggled, I've suffered, I can't do it anymore. And ever since I surrendered that, I feel like I I did die. I mean, I'm physically still here, obviously, but something, like, all I want to do now is, like, help people, where before it was just all about me and my survival and what I need, and, like, I mean, I just, like, gave back my Mercedes, I didn't want to live in L.A. anymore, I, like, live in a small place now, like, everything I do, like, I just, so, I'm, I'm just going to put it out there, and my agent freaked out and was <laughs> like, no one's going to hire you, they're going to think you're unstable, and... They're going to think you're a drug addict. You take all this Demerol. And I was like, so the fuck what? I, you know, if people are going to judge me, I don't want to work with them. You know, I don't. And I'm still, I'm here, like, still making my art. So I'm I'm just going to go for it. You don't need to do laundry. You don't need my, um, laundry money because you're doing the kind of movie you're putting out. And the gift you're giving the people, the gift you're giving to Jen today to come to New Hampshire. <laughs> I know that you will have 50 shirts because yeah. those people would give the shirt off their back. Bring your laundry to my house tonight. Or, yeah. or you'll get one I of her shirts. I can't do it in hot water. But <laughs> I can do it in cold. Kind of of the noise. Maybe it's not so much that you, a part of you died, but maybe you just gave up the suffering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gave that away because my, I'm dealing, recovering, getting through breast cancer. And one of my things that has inspired me was knowing that there are women that have gone before me that have managed to beat this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think no matter how bad I have it in life, there's always someone out there that's going to have it worse than I do. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, I'm, I'm grateful, I'm not grateful that I'm fighting breast cancer, right. but I'm grateful that I'm winning the battle. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's how you have to look at things. There's always somebody out there that's worse off than you are. Yeah. And, and it's not a death. It's a transformation. Yeah. yeah. A like death, a that's the wrong, yeah. yeah. Don't call it a death. That death, because without that, you wouldn't be where you are now. Yeah. And that is a piece is of you, and it's not gone. You probably don't realize it, but you're inspiring so many people, young people, people of all ages, and I think that's something to be very proud of. Thank you. I feel very blessed and very grateful, you know, and I just... I felt kind of like such an asshole because the first two people I met are like dying, you know, they're very sick, and I just felt like such a jerk, like here I am just 
a healthy person, like, ready to take my life, and here's people fighting for theirs, you know, and maybe that's what this journey is about, you know, it starts with me wanting to kill myself, and now I'm so appreciative, like, I don't want anybody to ever feel like I did, you know, in the beginning, so alone, I just don't want anybody to ever feel alone, because it's... We all go through that. It's just not a very At some nice point thing. in our lives, we if we're real with ourselves... Yeah. I mean, th there are some people who are not real with Don't themselves. tell her she's normal. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy, please. I know the crazy is like that's the normal. The crazy is normal. I know. I keep saying that. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. want to be normal even if I knew what it was. No. <laughs> but suicide has a stigma to it that it's bad, and it's not. Yeah. It's a choice. We we celebrate pro choice or pro life, and all these things. But is suicide is just another transition. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't have to be a bad thing. Yeah. Um, I've survived su suicide. I didn't try to commit suicide. My father did. It yeah. was successful. Yeah. But I know he did it because of the love for the rest of his family, not to make his life better right. or our lives better. Right. But in a sense, he did make our lives better. Wow. At some point, we're all touched by that tragedy of either losing, either losing someone to that, or preventing someone. I, at 16, found my mother, and I was fortunate enough to be able to call 911 and save her. But everybody, I think, at some point in their life, is touched by that in one way or another. But why is it such? I mean, the one thing I wanted to be able to do with this, this project is why is it so taboo to talk about it it does feel like that it's like you say the word suicide and everybody's like you know I people just... are afraid Catherine people are afraid I think for some... you're dealing you're right there on the edge you're dealing people in this room probably they were in this room because they've all been there on the edge dealing and if you bring that up to people who have not dealt they don't know how to do it and they're terrified, and that's why they do this, and they back off or they hide, because they're not. It's terrifying for them. It's culturally unacceptable with us because it's terrifying with us. We've been through the tunnel. You go through the tunnel, you get it. Especially if you've made it through the tunnel and gotten to the light. But it's it's a terror. It's an unknown, and it's a terror for them. That's the lack of, that's why they don't understand. I think everybody thinks of it at some point in time. And some people follow through for one reason or another, but I've thought of it. I, you know, I mean, I found myself actually preparing for it, but at the same time saying to myself, I don't want to die, but I didn't want to live the way I was living, and so I sought help. But some people, unfortunately, don't even think to get help. Yeah. Well, I they think that that's the only way out. But but it's not always the wrong thing. It's not the wrong choice either. I mean, in in my situation where that that I'm con connected to, there there was no help. That was what was helpful. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Well, I I don't I do not. I'm not regretful of what I did because it brought me here. Mm -hmm. The only thing I don't, what I want to help with is the feelings that I had that got me there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to, I don't want to tell people to, I, I, I don't want to say it's okay, but I also want to just like be there. I mean, when I knew this is the craziest shit ever, this is when I knew I had to like, I just wanted to give my whole life to this project. I literally, when I came up with the idea, typed on my Facebook page, first 50 people, I'm coming to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When I, I have only been suicidal twice in my life, two months ago, and when I was 15 years old. And when I was 15 years old, and I made a short film called Dear Emily, it actually is what got me my job on the Osbournes. So it was like one of those thankful things that was bad that happened that turned good. But my best friend in high school, I had never liked a girl before, and I started to have feelings for her. And I, she was starting to date guys, and I was so confused, and I just, I spent a week writing the perfect letter. I mean, you would walk in my room, and it was like crumpled up yellow legal pad <laughs> things everywhere, 
just everything had to be perfect with the letter. And I finally got up the courage to give it to her. And I like slipped it in her, her pocket. And after school, I saw her reading it with the two most popular girls in class. And they were laughing. And, oh. and I, I tried to kill myself that night. It did not work. Plastic Bic razors do not work. Um, and I quit high school. And I ran away to Los Angeles. And I lived in my car, you know, homeless. And... The crazy thing is, is that we've never seen each other since, and she's one of the 50 people. Oh, oh my God. Oh, wow. She's the last person I'm seeing. And it's and the schedule. She she's Down in Ohio. <clears throat> that's, where I, that's where I end. Where in Ohio? Um, near Cincinnati. So, but it, it even got deeper, so that's when I was like, oh, this is, I got to do this. Her sister, Ashley, uh, who was my piano teacher growing up, three months ago, her son, Tyler, 16 years old, committed suicide. And I was just like, all right, I get it. I'm going. I'm doing it. But, you know, I, I don't know what the journey is or where it's leading me, but I feel like that's a pretty big indicator of what this is about, yeah. you know. Wow. So... God bless the journey, right? Should, should, should I do a joke or something? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> do you more from how do you get a nun pregnant? Dress her up like an altar boy. <laughs> 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 That's a good one.